Hey guys, we are on the home stretch in the last nine weeks. So we are in week 10 and we're finishing up chemistry. If you look at week 10, um, your warm ups are here. All right, so for this week, there are a couple of things you can click through, like make sure the stuff is done. Some of it's this week, some of it's stuff from before spring break um, that some people just hadn't quite finished up. Okay. And you got a quick little warm up to see how you use the periodic table, if you remember how to do these things. Okay. You got some ed puzzles to show you some cool chemical reactions that we just can't safely do in a science classroom in middle school, or some places like this giant crystal cave in Mexico that I would like to take you on a field trip there, but it's not really possible right now. Okay. Um, you have this knowledge check. Okay. Do the best you can. Um, use your notes. You probably will not make an A. And I'm telling you that because Google Forms don't know how to do partial credit, which is just the way Google Forms are. Okay, so don't sweat whatever the grade is you end up with. I'm looking at which reactions or which changes you are solid on and which ones we need to go back over that you're still a little confused about and which indicators um, you are consistently getting right versus which ones we need to review. Plus, to tell the eighth grade teachers when you go to eighth grade what chemistry topics are our strengths and weaknesses. Okay, so just do your very best to use your notes. Um, before you start these things, okay, you should, um, we'll talk about our notes in a second, only worry about the atom counting game part one. Notice the due dates. You'll have time to um, do the Quizlet in part two the next time I see you in class. Okay, so I went ahead and assigned it because I know some people are traveling. Um, some people have doctor's appointments. I want to go ahead and give them time to work with their schedules. Okay. But with your notes, if you, you know, over here on the side, da -da -da, you see all the weeks, right? But my science notebook, if you click on this one, my science notebook is there. Okay. So if we ever do notes and I go too fast or you miss class, you can always find them here. I already have it open. Um, double check before you note the knowledge check that this is in there. This is a very important page. This is today's notes though, so I would go ahead copy this in, um, like push pa pause on this video, copy this in, and then I will explain them to you using my document camera in just a second. Okay, but I go ahead and get it all written in so that you can focus on the understanding portion. Okay, so let's get this part written in because this will help us with our assignment for the day. Okay. Now you should still have your periodic table. Okay. You might want to um, double check that you've got it and yours should be colored with metals, non-metals, and metalloids. Okay, I have six of them so I don't color all six because there's only so much time in the day. But just a couple things to remember that the columns that go up and down, okay, these little numbers across the top, those are the group numbers, also called families. Um, the ones that are in a column together, they have similarities. Like over here on the far right side, the noble gases, these have that similar characteristic of if you put an electric charge to them, they glow those pretty colors, like for neon, neon signs or open signs. Right, it's kind of like how people in your family, you may not look a lot alike, but there's some similar characteristics between you. Maybe you have like the same eyes. Okay. The rows that go from side to side, think like your schedule, like first period, science, Melanie, room D208, they go from left to right. Okay, Those are called periods. So think about your schedule. Um, a period, like the periodic table, it's a regular repeating pattern. You'll get more into what, what are the patterns of the periodic table as you move up in science. Because the shape, if you were just a marketing person, you would make the shape. This is not a nice normal rectangle. It's not like a cute little hexagon. Like this is kind of an odd configuration, but that's because it has purpose. Like these groups and periods mean things. Stuff you will go more so into eighth grade about are these numbers across the top. Don't worry about the ones in the middle, just the left and right side. And see how we circled the ones place? These are gonna tell us the number of valence electrons. Valence electrons means the electrons on the outside. Like you've seen, let's just say that's the nucleus of an atom. You know, you've seen atoms with these circles around them, right? These outermost ones, however many shells it's got, the electrons on the outside are valence electrons because they're going to be the ones bumping into other atoms and either reacting or not reacting. Okay. 
but the number of shells or of levels or orbitals, you'll hear it called a lot of different things. That is the period number. Okay? That's what it says down here. These are the number of electron shells or electron orbitals or energy levels. Like I said, they're called several things. Okay? But it's kind of like a table when you go out to dinner. If it's just two people or like hydrogen and helium, you'd have a table for two. Maybe it's date night. Or if you take the whole family, you need a little bit bigger table. But if you've got like a, a big top table, maybe it's a birthday party or something, you need even more room. Okay, so the more um, electrons you have, the bigger it's going to be. Okay, so that stuff you'll definitely go into more detail about in eighth grade, but I just wanted it to be out there in your brain. Okay. Now for your notes. A lot of the stuff at the top we've done for several weeks now. Some of it you just knew from being on the planet. Um, some things we gave a special name to. Like you guys already knew that this was water. Okay, now we gave it the title of being a chemical formula, right? So think of when you were younger and you learned your ABCs. Then you learned words. Then you learned sentences. Then you learned paragraphs. Chemistry is very similar. The element symbols that I know from my periodic table are the letters. The chemical formulas are the words, okay? And remember that these are one uppercase or uppercase and a lowercase to be the symbol, okay? This is just the fancy name for water. Even though everybody calls it water, this is its chemical name, okay? This little two, y'all were able to tell me that there's two H's and we would draw the molecule. Remember, it looks like Mickey Mouse. But this is called a subscript. We already knew that means there's two H's because there's one two. But that's the term for this. And I break down the word sub, like submarine, means under or below. Script means written. Like if you write a script for a play or you go to the doctor and need medicine, he writes a prescription. Okay, but that's a subscript because it's a little too written down. It's not a full size two, nor is it a two written at the top like an exponent in math class. That is known as a superscript. Okay. This was just because of the symbols. We have to write it correctly. Big C, big O is carbon monoxide, like you've got the smoke detectors at home and they also detect carbon monoxide. But if I wrote it wrong and wrote big C, little O, that is not the same thing. That would be cobalt, which is a pretty blue metal. So gas that kills me, pretty blue metal, not the same thing. Okay. So all that stuff we knew, we're, we're pretty good at it too. Okay. However, things get a little more complicated sometimes. Some questions will ask me how many elements. Okay, so all I really need to do is look for capital letters. One, two, three, four. In case I didn't have my periodic table with me, right? So I know there's four elements. This is sodium bicarbonate, which you know as baking soda. And it kind of looks like the word nacho, but it's spelled wrong. Okay. But what if I ask you how many atoms of each element? Or I have a question to ask me how many total atoms I have. It's just like a little addition problem. Okay, there's one of those. There's not a little one there because it's kind of redundant. I could put a one there. It's not wrong. But if I wrote the symbol, I have one. Okay, it just takes up ink and space, and we don't need to do that. Okay. So same concept, but some chemicals are a little more complicated. So you've got AlOH3, right, which is aluminum hydroxide, but you would know it from like Tums or um, milk of magnesia, something when you have upset tummy and... Like that stomach acid has gone crazy. See, antacid, like anti-acid, that's known as a base. Okay. And this, some people are like, is that an I or L? Well, you know it's not a capital I because it didn't have the bar at the top and the bottom. Also, there's not an element that's just a capital A. Okay, so those two things combined help me realize that that's a lowercase L. Okay. But this, this is just like a math class when you do distributed property. Okay, whatever's on the inside the parentheses, you multiply by what's on the outside of the parentheses, you know, with your PEMDAS or whatever version of that you have now. Okay. This is what it looks like. Okay. You're like, but why don't I just put O3H3? That's because this OH, this hydroxide, is what's called a polyatomic ion. You don't have to worry about that now. But later in high school chemistry, you'll learn that it kind of has a personality of its own. It acts as a one unit, acts as a team. So we have to keep it separated. Okay. So nobody wants to write that out all the time. So we just do distributed property. Like the AL doesn't have a subscript, so I know it's one, and it's not inside the parentheses, so I don't have to worry about this three. 
there's only one of them. But there's three of those because one inside times three is three. Same thing with the H's. One inside times three is three. And then add them up. Right? So one plus three plus three is seven. Okay. Set so nothing complicated. It's simple math. Don't make it harder than it is. Okay. Something else that you've learned along the way, just kind of being on the planet. If I ask little you, like little toddler you, little kindergarten you about what do plants need to survive? Behold my artwork, it's lovely. <laughs> you would know that it needs sunlight and it needs rain and a place to grow and you could tell me all the things. Okay, then a little bit later, you learn this big long word, photosynthesis. Okay, but when we break down the word, it literally means photo and make. That's like the gist of what those two words mean. Okay. It doesn't mean I'm making light. The plants use light to make their own food or their own energy. Okay. So remember we did the words, or so the, the letters, the words, and now we're going to use sentences or chemical equations. This is more what you'll be moving towards in eighth grade. Okay. But I've written out here the chemical equation for photosynthesis. Okay. And it's exactly what you already told me. Plants need carbon dioxide. They need water. They need radiant energy. Notice I didn't just put sunlight, nor did I put light energy. I'm specific, because remember when we did our energy unit and we did Mrs. Synth, it's radiant energy, okay? And I know that that's gonna give off oxygen gas, which is good for us humans. And this is what the food's making, for the plant's making for itself. This is its food. Um, it's a type of sugar. It's not the sugar you'd put in your tea, that is sucrose. And in fruit, it's fructose. And in milk, it's lactose. This is glucose, okay? They all have, kind of have like a different configuration. It's like building something with the exact same Legos, just putting them in different spots, okay? So this is what the plant makes to use for energy, okay? Later, you'll learn about respiration, which is the exact opposite. That's what we do. We need oxygen in our food, and we will, you know, burn off some energy, we'll sweat a little bit, and we'll blow out carbon dioxide. It's more complicated, but that's the gist, okay? This equation, these parts here, ingredients, those are called reactants because they're gonna react. The products are, they're produced. That one's probably the least sciencey word on there, okay? But if I look at this, this is like my recipe, but if I'm gonna go and say I need four dozen cookies and I go open my pantry and my fridge and I only have like two eggs, um, half a stick of butter, and like a handful of chocolate chips, that's not gonna cut it, okay? So not only do I need to know what I need, I need to know how much I need to make what I wanna make, okay? So you see I put these sixes out in front. It's not always six, it depends on the equation, but that's because without that six, I just have one carbon. Over here, I need it to be this. So I have to have six copies of CO2, right? Same thing with my H's. I only had two, but I need 12. So later in chemistry, you'll do what's called balancing equations. So this just make sure you have the right amount of ingredients to get the right amount of products, which I've already balanced out here, okay? But what that six means is that I have six copies of CO2. Nobody wants to write out all that. So we put the six out front because it's faster. But what that means is the number of copies, but the technical term for it is the coefficient, okay? You notice they both start with C or CO. You've seen coefficient in math class, okay? Like, you know, 2x plus 3 equals blah, 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 blah. That, that 2 out in front of the x, that's a coefficient. It's the same thing. You're like, I thought this was math class, Ms. Nani. Correct? Um, no, sorry. I get distracted. Those noises are my IMs. <laughs> the, the x, right? You're telling me how many of those I have. It's the same thing, okay? So let's say I ask you those same questions above. But this time, there's a coefficient involved. This is sulfuric acid, like in a battery, okay? Like battery acid kind of stuff. Same thing, I just have to multiply by the four out front. Because I had two hydrogen times four copies is eight total, right? Or four times one S is four. Or four times four O's is 16, right? And then I total it all up, and I get 18. Okay. So that's how that works out. Now, once I have this information, 
This part's going to be easy peasy. This is the atom counting game, and it tells you drag and drop the elements and count the atom for each chemical 